be the outrider on the pony over on the turn or sometimes a person on foot. There's a gentleman named Larry Gilligan at this track. It's an ex-rider. He stands over by the middle of the turn and has a walkie-talkie. And as the riders are pulling up, they can yell over to him to, to relay the message to us. So that way it gets up quicker for, for the fans and, and we can expedite the thing uh, faster than it used to be in the old days where they had to wait to come back and unsaddle and all of that. So yes, there, there is. At, uh, at Los Alamitos, where I worked most recently, they have the outrider himself out there that has a walkie-talkie. Here there's a specific person over there. But that's what is called the quick official. If you look, he sits right about at the three-quarter pole. He's got a little sign behind him that says quick official. If you're here this afternoon or any day, you can have a look and you'll see Larry sitting out there. He's in quite a character, an ex-jockey, and he wears his big floppy hat, and that's his job for the day. He sits out there. Fortunately, he's not allowed to have any beers out there. I don't think he'd see the last race, but he sits out there and passes the time. And uh, he's the, when the jockeys go by, if there's something's happened, as they go by, they just say to him, I want to claim foul. And then he will call the stewards and say the rider of the six horses is claiming foul. So that's why it happened so quick now. Larry Gilligan, yes he was, yes, that's right, he used to ride like second string behind Shoemaker for, for Charlie Whittingham, yeah. I actually, uh, when I was a, a young child growing up, my father trained horses before me, I've got some pictures from the late 50s and early 60s with Larry and we won some races for my dad, so I've known him a long time. I've got one right here. How many stewards are there at a track? Uh, traditionally, as, uh, as far as I know, it's always been three. I think that there has been times when they've had an experiment at one time uh, with five, and that was short-lived. Uh, but it's come over from, I guess, European racing. It's where the tradition of stewards has started, as being the racing officials from centuries ago. And it's always been a panel of three to get a majority decision whenever there's a discrepancy. You know. Right here we have one. <laughs> it's a very good question. Have there been any claims of foul or objections this year? And Delmar has been notorious the last, I could say, seven, eight years for there being an inordinate number of claims of foul, especially in the opening week out here. It's just weird. But this year has been exceptionally good. I'm going to say we've probably had three, maybe four in the first, what have we had, nine days of racing already. So this year has been particularly good. Any reason for that? Uh, opening day, I think there was three. And uh, traditionally, now I'm looking at it from a different perspective this year. This is my first year as a steward in Del Mar, my second year overall. But there was three objections, I believe, opening day. And none of them, in our opinion, led to any a change of uh, placings that we thought that cost a placing, but uh, it was just a little bit of sloppy riding, and I think there's been one or two since opening day, but to, uh, what Trevor said, to uh, reiterate what he said uh, uh, with the riding uh, improving, uh, we as stewards the very first day go into the jockey's room and have a discussion with the riders to ask them what we would like to see in safe riding to protect not only themselves but the horses and, and your betting interests. And uh, we didn't think it quite worked after the uh, first day when there was three objections. So the following day, the second day, we went in again and reiterated our, uh, our wishes that they uh, straighten up their riding or that we'll have some fines or suspensions out there. And since then, it's been pretty good. So, so far, knock on wood, it's, uh, it's been a pretty, uh, pretty clean meet. Right there, we'll get to you next. What are the, you'll see these towers right here, and there are three people that climb these towers when the horses are on the way to the gate, and they monitor the races as well, and the question is what, what do they actually do? They're called patrol judges. Uh, in the mornings before you see them at the races, they usually do various activities in the racing office involved with the entries and scratches and identification of horses. But in the afternoon, they're called patrol judges. And there's three of them out here in Del Mar. There's one just past the finish line, one in this tower behind you, and one over on the turn. And what they do is they're hooked up to a headset to one of our stewards in the stand on top of the grandstand where they give us information as the race is progressing live. And we can follow what they're saying and what we see on the monitors that are behind us and also live through the binoculars. So it's just a, 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 a fail save for a uh, redundancy to verify what we're seeing or might not be seeing out there at a closer and a better, more live angle. And they report to us and it's just more information that we have to work <coughs> with the races and adjudicating them. They can suggest things, they can bring it to our attention, but they aren't the ones that actually post the inquiry. And right here. How do I repeat that? What does it feel like as a steward to 
You had a veteran rider who used to ride for you who knew how to push your buttons, is that right? <laughs> well, I, I think it's actually... Who was he, first of all? <laughs> <laughs> well, again, this is my second year, so I haven't had quite uh, that scenario happen, at least not that often. But I think that the veteran riders, uh, one, they would respect my opinion because they know that I'm also a veteran trainer and I've been around for 30 years. And I kind of know all the little games that they try to pull or the little excuses they make and whether they're legitimate or not. And I think really a professional rider is just that. He's a professional. I don't think that they would try to pull something on somebody that was untoward or this and that. But, uh, you know, I I'm, I'm, think that I'm prepared for that and I think that I'm above board. And uh, uh, one of the things that I try to bring to this game is integrity and character. And I, and I don't think that that would become an issue. I have to look at the facts the way they are before me. And that's the way I would decide it. You know, just speaking as an independent, not from a steward's point of view, but it is amazing how few jockeys make up the vast percentage of claims of foul. And right now we, we don't have, let's call them the troublemakers, you know, the guys who really just squeal for anything. We don't have any in the jocks room right now. Um, there's one that probably makes up about 30% of the claims of foul, but there were three of them, and those three used to, uh, I'm just guessing now, but they would make up about 90% of the claims of foul for jockeys out there. You know, you got guys like Eddie Della, Husay, Lafitte Pinkai, Chris McCarran, Alex Solis. You could almost say they would never claim foul. If they came in and claimed foul, they had almost been brought down in a race, you know. So you can pick out the jockeys who are not going to claim foul, and you can pick out the crybabies that anything happens out there. And they vastly exaggerated. They call the stewards and say, gosh, he almost brought me down on the turn. And you look at the tape, and I mean, there might be a little bit of contact, and that's all. And he's saying, I almost came down, you know, my horse stumbled and all that kind of thing. And it is amazing how many of the claims go to a very, very small percentage of the jockeys. Do we have one, another one? No? Right there, okay. What kind of action would lead to a claim of foul? Uh, they, they can be various. They can obviously the uh, the obvious is the interference, the bumping, uh, the cutting too short in front of a horse, uh, and angling a horse out in front of another horse. Uh, that's uh, ones that are human caused. And there can be ones in the starting gate where a horse gets off bad, and we would put up an inquiry sign or. Uh, uh, usually it has to do with interference or rough riding, uh, things like that, uh, taking another horse's path, uh, being unsafe out there, uh, maybe over aggressive over whipping of a horse or something like that, but that would be something that we, we would call them in for, not so much an inquiry, but usually it, it has to do with mostly interference. I think a pretty good example for that is just driving on the freeway. You know you know when a guy changes lane, if he puts his blinker on and he's pretty clear of you and he changes lane, that's fine. And other guy will cut you off and that's when you get mad at him. Same with the jockeys, you know. that You can come across someone provided you give them room, but if some of the jocks just, they either don't look or they're just not thinking and they, they literally cut these guys off and then they get mad and they will claim foul. So it's a little bit of, I think you could say, give and take. They know when, when someone's done something wrong and when it's just, you know, um, it's I, I think what Trevor said is the greatest uh, example that you can have is like driving on a freeway when you're out there every day and you know the drivers that pay attention and the ones that don't and the ones that just inadvertently come over. Sometimes it's totally by accident. Other times, it's whether it's intentional or not, I don't know, but it's, it's very similar to that. We had an apprentice here the other day. I think he's one of the few that's, that's been suspended out here and he's just started riding and he just probably wasn't thinking. He, he, his horse was going pretty well and he wanted to come out and he just came out and of course there was a guy right alongside of him and he did almost bring him down. I think he got suspended for that too. Yes, and, uh, Mr. Martinez I believe that was and he got three days and he's a young rider and he's learning and he was contrite about it when he came in and that's what they do. They review films with us the next day so we can try to educate them on what they did wrong and, and he's a young rider but he just did this move so abruptly that we thought it was dangerous and we have to let them know that.